expansion. But um, but that probably brings us on to where we are today, Sid, because 2020, if I would have told you last year where we would be today... You wouldn't believe it. Yeah, well, you, you would have called me a lunatic and yep. you probably would never speak to me again and try and get me committed. But here we are. <laughs> We'd be together there. Yeah, we would be. <laughs> um, here we are. Uh, we've got... Uh, look, I, I guess if, if I was to probably take a step back from the whole COVID thing and sort of try and look at it from a bigger picture, um, my belief... I, I do not even need to go to the argument about is it China, is it man-made or not, uh, is it part of this huge global conspiracy, uh, and, and all of that, or is it 5G? Because you know that there's a, oh, lot, of, a lot of information there, yep. and, and I think a lot of it has some legs. But putting all those things aside, um, I don't think any government should have the power to tell anyone you can't you can't work you can oh, you need to stay home absolutely. and you don't I, I don't believe in any of those restrictions absolutely. i think their role should be strictly to advise with with all of the information available not just the one that they've chosen is the flavor of the day because we have had flavor in the days before, like uh, tobacco, you know, Absolutely. once in a, yeah, and 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 even asbestos is another great example. Where all those people, all these people speaking about, oh, you know, what do you know? You're not a health expert, but I know enough in history to know that health experts not only get it wrong, but they're also extremely compromised as money corrupts everything. And which health and which health experts? That's what I'm getting at. Because invariably, mm. the government that wants to push its own agenda Indeed. will have the medical experts that, are, that align sure. themselves 100%. with that political party, not in the interests of the people. Trust me, uh, uh, um, Sid, if you wanted to find a study that says that eating pizza at the distillery wood fire three times a week is good for your health and will prolong your life by 20 years, if you someone. had the money, you will find someone, you will pay for that study and you will get the result that you want. 100% you will. That's the thing that I Just don't give me the contact with yeah, you. Not a problem, Paulie. <laughs> email it to Sid. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so so that, that's, I think, the issue that we're facing where where absolutely. you know these governments have got absolute drunk with power yeah um, fanatical they've been given the mandate by big pharmaceutical which is an extremely powerful and wealthy uh, arm of the world corporate that elite people will never ever understand how sure. powerful yep indeed I mean, I, I've got a policy when it comes to all of these things uh, called follow the money. That's kind of how my critical thinking... I, I watch it. Yeah, that's, that's how I kind of operate. So whenever a problem arises or an idea is put forward, particularly by the usual suspects, the governments or mass media or, uh, you know, certain corporations, um, I always try and see, okay, cool, where's, the, where's, what, where's this flow of money leading to? And after all the fear and anxiety and everything that they whipped up, you start seeing, and this is strictly about the money side, you start seeing that governments around the world are investing, as we speak, billions and billions of dollars into vaccines. Absolutely. And, and technology behind it. And the technology. But just staying with, with pharma, um, I think it's quite easy to see, and I'm a, I'm cynical. I've always been quite cynical, sometimes good, sometimes bad. But um, it's healthy. I think so. Um, I, I the same people that have the power to create the problem in labs in Wuhan or wherever they may be, labs that received 3.5 million dollars from Barack Obama, uh, not too long before Correct. all this shit happened. Um, the same people that have the the only people that have the power to create this problem are the only people that are then going to go and make all of this money from that same problem, which I believe they've created. I'll give you an analogy. Sure. Antivirus software. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I've been using that one a lot too. Antivirus software. Who, who, it's who, a well-known who, fact who? that the minute you go and buy the new software, mm -hmm. there's already another virus out there. Of course. Right, that needs to be updated. And yep. the same programmers Indeed. that are developing the antivirus have yep. got the experts out there 
sure. developing the viruses. If you can find a virus, if you can create an IT virus, yep. you are immediately employed at great money. Sure. By, by the absolute by yep. the application of writers course. themselves. Well, you know a little bit about that world, and um, I've read a little bit into it, and hence why the name Bill Gates uh, comes up um, a lot. I, had, uh, I used to have meetings with Bill Gates. Wow. Okay. When he was when he just before it became Windows, when he had MS DOS, uh -huh. we used to go to his quarterly meetings. It used to be a round table of about ten of us. I used to sit next to Bill Gates on the round table. Sure. Uh, up at the Hyatt Hotel at Kings Cross. That's Very where we used to meet. What was that like? Interesting. He was a bit more of a nerd. Nerd at those days. He used sure. to wear the checkered woolen vest and short sleeve shirt. And you know, he was a gentleman. We used to talk to each other. But in those days, when I was at NEC Corporation, we were one of the biggest you know, manufacturers of IT equipment mm. worldwide. And so I had the you know, the, the privilege of of, of uh, you know going to those quarterly meetings and sitting and listening to him. And before, when MS DOS became Windows, and then who would have the thought huh? of IBM? What, yeah, what yeah. he's doing uh, to the world today, yeah. what he became, and now and now consequently, what he's doing to the world today. But Paulie, um, did you say you had a time machine? Maybe we can throw Sid in it. We can go back to that meeting. Meeting. Um, dispose of Bill Gates and come back to, to 2020. Yeah. <laughs> can, can you make that happen, brother? No, Bill Gates is our friend. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a disclaimer.